All right, so let's go over a few things. We got some questions. Welcome to Tuesday Bible study. That's my new subscriber, I think Marissa from the Netherlands, who a new Facebook friend and who my video that's uploading. Uh, it's going to take forever for that thing to upload. It's all it's almost at one o'clock. <laughs> Y'all, it's like 50 minutes on my cell phone, so it's going to be very slow. Uploading from my cell phone is very different. So, but Pebbles, I mean, Vicky said she had a question. I want you to look at that. Did y'all just see that? You know what? Now that I think about it, I told her that. I told her I clicked it on my cell phone. If I'm telling them. But when I clicked it, it wasn't there. And I told her that that happens a lot to just ask me. Let's see if we can read at least a partial of what her question was. I hope I can get these questions across in an understanding way. Ha ha, as I confuse myself. So John 317 part says, but that the world through him may be saved. Harmonious arrangement. That the harmonious arrangement through him should be saved. That's the first definition, his harmonious arrangement or his sheep, however you want to word it. You know, officially, according to Strong's Concordance, the first definition of cosmos is appropriate, harmonious arrangement, order, constitution, government. Government, his kingdom, his constitution would be his law, his sheep, his, well, constitution would be his law. Uh, government would be his kingdom. Yeah. So, but when you break down, what what is his uh, harmonious arrangement? The arranging of his sheep at the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. So, which is what grace is in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. So Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2 cover it from A to Z. So does Romans 8, 29, and 30. So that's all I get. That's all I get out of Vicky's question. I'm sorry. Justin said on Monday, yesterday's, that makes sense why Joseph is wrong on Revelation. He is a goat, in my opinion, wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, I'm not going to judge his salvation because you never know if the Lord can wake him up or not. But I can tell you what, it's no longer, it's no longer, the Lord's no longer going to be using me to help him with the truth. <laughs> Oh, and new subscriber right there. So that's pretty much it with the comments. I did see a couple of notifications up there. And now we're set to upload video. That's the other one uploading on my other channel. So now we're in Daniel in the column. It's the columns, since it says Daniel at the top, it's these are shorter columns. So it's only five verses. Today and tomorrow are very short Daniel studies. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now, Nebuchadnezzar later pins Daniel for himself. So the Lord does call him. So you're about to read through these next four chapters, the process that Dan, that Nebuchadnezzar went through to be a sheep. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. As, okay, we already read that. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So a certain portion of these uh, Israeli children and of the king's seed and of the princes. So Jehoiakim's literal bloodline. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs. Already read it, sorry. Scrolling up and down, getting lost. 
children in whom was no blemish. So the king's seed and the princes, in other words, semicolon, the children of the Israeli bloodline that they just brought into captivity, that were the best of the best of the best. They had no blemish, but were well favored, you know, good build, good intelligence, wide eyed and bushy tailed, you know what I mean? And skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, because see, that's what the evil world is today a fake science called pseudoscience or scientism and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's food that they wanted them to eat or the king's meat in the King James and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king so it's kind of like a three-year boot camp where they're going to be trained in all of their astrology world and all of that their wisdom worlds of science and so forth but they would also be eating a certain training table type food to make them strong to where because if you're physically strong then you can also be mentally and spiritually strong i guess is what they thought you know they wanted these people extremely healthy the best of the best clear minds very healthy john 4 33 through 42 is where we're at today therefore said the disciples to one another hath any man brought him ought to eat jesus saith unto them my meat is to do the will of there's that word meat again Look at that right there and both. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. Say not ye, there are yet four months. And you would have to read, you know, go through yesterday's Bible study to understand because they were talking about uh, food or like a meal. And then Jesus is explaining it at the deeper level. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come up the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages and gathered fruit unto the life eternal, that both he soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. I'm just going to go ahead and start reading this in the New Living. This is getting too King Jamesy for me, and I'm starting to zone out. Sorry. If I am, maybe some of y'all are too. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples just asked because Jesus spoke as if it were food. And Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. So go back and read and watch yesterday's Bible study. You know the saying, four months between planting and a harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. See, while I'm reading that in the King James I'm doing two things at once. I'm focusing on what it's saying and just trying to read it because it's not easy to read. And my brain kind of goes, I can get to where I can read every bit of it, but my mind will zone out and I, I will quit understanding. In other words, sometimes I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I can't focus on what it's saying while I'm just reading the words. So, But if there's anything un incorrect here in the New Living, we'll fix it. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. In other words, the sheep go out and harvest sheep. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? You know the saying, one plants and another harvest, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work and now you, are now you will get to gather the harvest. Many Samaritans believe. See, this is what's gonna happen uh, at the abomination that causes desolation. 
Hindus are going to wake up to Jesus Christ. Buddhists are going to wake up to Jesus Christ. Muslims are going to wake up to Jesus Christ. Um, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if some Brotherhood Club members aren't going to wake up to Jesus Christ, you know, Luciferians. And uh, you'll be surprised how very few of them are these free will believing church going Christians. I think it'll be equal number of all world religions and free will believing Christians that celebrate Christmas and Easter. You can throw them right into the same lump as a Hindu or Buddhist. So I believe the same percentage will come out of each. It's not just going to be your friends and family that are believers, but they don't seem to grasp the truth. No. You might be blessed enough to have a member of your family wake up or two, but don't count on it. Don't count on, well, I'll love God if he wakes up my mom or my dad or my wife. Now, you better, you better have it put in your, hopefully the Lord has put it in your heart now to where it doesn't matter because he's going to wipe away all your tears at the end anyway. And you better believe if he's brought you this far, he can finish the job. Don't forget that word pride. You better watch out. Family pride, national pride, it's all pride. Get rid of all of it, Holy Spirit. Get rid of all of it and anybody listening to my videos. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many to hear his message and believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. They heard Jesus and believed. Now, what does he say? My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now he speaks to what? He speaks to your heart. I've never heard voices, folks. Nope, nothing's ever appeared to me. Just suddenly I just am able to understand things. And that's the way it is in y'all. You just start to see the truth. You just, it just, it gets revealed to you and all of a sudden you just take to it. I can say the same thing to you and you understand it, but I can say the same thing to every one of your friends. They'll all shoot me a bird. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. These were Samaritans. And that's the end of today's Bible study. Love y'all very much.